Oh, that's taste. How could you not like that sound? When I decided that I was gonna move up from a, my JK, which was a great vehicle, three and a half inch metal cloak lift, one of the best, most capable vehicles I've had. And when I decided to move away from it, I was just going to get another a JL Rubicon. I had no intentions on getting a 392. Got 6599, 6599 miles right now. So far it's been an enjoyable few months. I decided I was going to purchase a new vehicle and it was going to be a six cylinder Wrangler Rubicon, a JL. I had the Hard Rock 2016, which at that point was the top of the line rig, and it was phenomenal vehicle. Best vehicle I had up till this point out of all the Jeeps I've had. It was the most capable off road and on road. Here we are at Turner River Road. I feel like we might get some rain in here. I just popped the top off. It's a little overcast, but 2016 Wrangler Rubicon. It's a hard rock edition. I've had the 35s and the three and a half inch metal cloak game changer lift on there now for a couple thousand miles, a few thousand, three thousand maybe. Love it. Plenty of clearance, plenty of room for articulation. Yeah, it rides a little stiffer than stock, but what do you expect when you're going off-road? With the lift and everything else done, it was a great vehicle, but the time had come. I started looking. I couldn't find what I wanted. I figured if I'm going to drop the money on a new vehicle, I want to get what I want. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to go out there and find what I want. Well, I couldn't find what I wanted. I could have ordered one, but I wanted one, you know, then I didn't want to have to go through the hassle of ordering and waiting. Well, then when it became apparent that I wasn't going to find one, the color that I wanted, what I wanted, where I wanted, for the price I wanted, none of it was going to happen. When that became apparent, I decided, you know what, it's not that big a stretch from a, a fully stocked Rubicon with everything I want to the 392. The thing was, it was going to be my daily driver and there were the questions about gas. I decided I was going to purchase a 392 and started checking out what was there and decided that I had come across, I saw a Snazberry Rubicon, not a 392, just a, and I was like, man, that's a great color. And I just got over, I had a white, uh, my last Rubicon was white. I wanted to change it up a little, so I decided to get something and uh, decided I was going to get a, a red. It was either going to be Firecracker Red or Snazberry. I wasn't sure which one. So one day I saw both a Firecracker Red and a Snazberry in the same parking lot and decided, you know, I, I like the Firecracker really stands out, but I like the long-term staying with the, the Snazberry more. So I went on the look for a 392 Snazberry. Couldn't find one nowhere in the country could I find one well I found one but they, they wanted like 30 grand over so then I decided you know what let me go I'm gonna maybe I'll, I'll order one and I'm like you know what they're still they're still floating around out there let me see what I could find so I did go in and talk to a dealer about ordering one and they were no help really they were just same bind as everybody else so I decided the uh to order one. So I called up the dealer. I said, I'm going to come down, made the arrangement, went down there. And then the XR package was discontinued like two days before I decided I was going to order one. And I really wanted that XR. I wanted the gearing and I wanted the lift. And that was, was something I would do anyways, most likely. So although the, the, the standard 392 without the XR package is already lifted so it, this one's mighty uh, mighty fine the way it is and it handles in uh, off-road and on-road for a vehicle as capable as this is off-road it handles amazingly well on-road so I went on the look 
for a Snazberry 392 and had no luck at all. I went to order one and then two days before I went to place my order, they discontinued the XR package. So now I'm like, okay, what am I gonna, so I decide now I'm just gonna go into a holding pattern, see if I can find something out there. And I started looking around and there were some vehicles out there with XR packages, but there were colors that I wasn't interested in currently. You know, gray, black, white. Um, nothing that nothing that made me want to jump ship. So then while I'm doing my scouring around, I see a dealership a couple hours from me on the east coast of Florida has one. It's a non-XR though. But it was in Snazberry and had everything else I wanted. It called them up, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll be over and take a look at it. I get over there, it's not even on the lot. The people I was talking to weren't even the salespeople. They were just some company that works with these giant dealerships to get somebody to show up. Needless to say, I was pissed. So now I'm getting ready to turn around. Sales guy grabs me. Oh, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. We're so yeah, I'll give you 37.5 for that. Now, these people want to give me a good substantial amount over what other dealers are quoting me for a trade-in. And I... I started talking to the guy and I said, well, the one that you guys advertised, how long before it shows up? And the guy says, well, we expect it in six weeks. At that point, I started thinking, you guys give me this money, I'll put $1,000 down. We got something put into writing about exactly what I wanted and what I was going to get. I left $1,000 down in about three and a half weeks, almost four weeks into it, they called me and said, your vehicle's in. I got the color that I wanted. So the dealer called me about three and a half weeks early. The vehicle was in. I went over there on Friday, the 22nd of April, and picked it up. Drove it back the 180 miles, so to my house. We're in the 392. We've gone a couple miles since I picked it up at the dealership. We're getting ready to hit the road officially here. Haven't had a chance to do much, and I'm still got a break-in period, so it's gonna be an easy couple hours driving. And I've been very happy with it since. So I did spend some time with a friend of mine's XR when he went away for a few weeks. He let me borrow it, just check it out, because he knew I was uh, interested. It's a great vehicle. But now that I've got the standard one, you know, the, the standard 392, I'm very happy with this vehicle. So now I've got 35s on, which was something I planned on. The gearing on the XR definitely gave it a little more like quickness. It's, it's hard to tell because I don't have a bolt together, but I'd like to say that it was a little bit more quick to respond and a little bit more acute in its steering and the way it felt. But it, it wasn't that much stiffer than this vehicle. That being said, this standard 392 is fantastic and off the road. And the trails that I've done and the, and the places that I've been, this vehicle has been stupendous. I can't say enough good things about especially on some roads that I used to go on that were completely washboard. And I mean like washboard, like it would jar your kidneys. You know, you'd have body parts flying out of your mouth because these things were just brutal. And this thing just soaked it up. And I never got to that, like, I almost want to call it a resonant frequency where in every vehicle I've ever driven from pickups to to motorcycles on a washboard type dirt road, you get to this resident frequency where the things just bounce around and you fly off, you know, you're, you're flying around. But I didn't get to that point in this vehicle, which I found different because every other vehicle I've had that issue with. The XR package, the, the extra lift, the extra clearance I would like, and also the gearing. Those would be the big sellers. And now that I've got the standard, I'm not the least bit disappointed in what I did. In fact, I'm, I'm overly 
impressed with the way they've done it and how well this vehicle is put together as far as off-road and on-road. It really is a phenomenal vehicle. You cannot take this thing for granted. This is a muscle car, not a sports car. You are not going around corners in this thing. You're not gonna come flying up to an S-curve and slam your brakes to slow down. It, it, this isn't a vehicle for that. There's a time and a place to use this type of power to have a lot of fun and not get killed or kill somebody else. And a curvy road is not the place for you to let yourself get big balls in this thing because you will end up killing yourself, wrecking your vehicle, or killing somebody else. There's just no way around it. I've already noticed a tendency, like if you're going at a fairly good clip on the highway, you know, speed limit 70, you're doing around 70. If you're trying to keep up with people, you're probably having to do 85 to keep from getting killed. But around 70 miles an hour and you stop on that gas pedal, this thing will rock it off and up to the right. All four wheels just go and grr. And it, and it moves, man. And if you're not ready for that hard shift towards the right, you know, in the Viper, if I did that kind of stuff without traction control and, and any protective nannies, my rear end would want to swing out to the right and start fishtailing out. When you stop on the gas pedal, even at 60 or so, it, it'll want to kick out. So this thing is doing it with all four tires. So it obviously it wants to go that direction. I'm very happy. Now I'm in Florida, so there's no mountains to climb around here and no big hills or anything. Or hills are three or four hours, mountains are, you know, 10 hours. So there's nothing close. So that extra clearance may come in handy out in the swamp and the mud, the deep mud around here, or up in the, the real mountains where there's boulders to climb. But right now it's not gonna affect me at all. And I'm very happy with this setup of this stock vehicle with 35s is a, a great vehicle i've yet to have it on a really long road trip so i'm i'm looking forward to see what happens but yeah i'm i'm very happy with the choice of the standard 392 and at this point i'm going to do my mods slowly and tastefully i've always gone balls to the wall and and built things up radically and then the next thing you know it's out of control so with this one it's my daily driver I am going to go at it a little bit more slowly to address things as they come up one thing I know right now I need I see a lot of people getting steps but I don't want steps I would much prefer just one small rail I like the one rail there like I had on my last JK I don't need anything big. It gives me enough to stand on, but it's not sticking out real far. So that's how I ended up in a 392.